final replay in 53 years and the eighth ever in the story of the All-Ireland Championship. Galway, as you've been hearing, will start James Scahill in goal. Bad shoulder or not, they were anxious that he plays and indeed he does in goal. Kevin Hines has recovered from a facial injury and takes his place at fullback and he's alongside Johnny Cohen and Fergal Moore. Tony O'Gregan had his hands full in the drawn match with Henry Shefflin in the second half. He lines up alongside Niall Donoghue today and David Collins. Man of the match last time out, Ear Litanian partners Andy Smith in midfield. Niall Burke got a goal and two points but was still replaced. He's back on the 40 with David Burke and Cyril Donlan either side of him. Joe Canning seeks to replicate his performance here earlier in the month with Damien Hayes and James Regan named in the same full forward line. Alongside me, Michael Dagnan, who especially should we look out for, Michael? Well, I think there's only one player on the Galway team today that everyone's looking at, and that's James Kehill. You know, a very serious injury coming into the game. And I'd say he was anxious to play, and the management were anxious that he'd play. He made a brilliant save the last day. He's very assured his puckouts are so important. So, can he last the pace? I'm watching him in the warm up. His puckouts look to be fine, he looks to be sharp and he obviously got an injection or something into it, so he's a huge man for Galway today. Well, a county as astute as Kilkenny is bound to have examined any shortcomings from the drawn match and taken appropriate action. Not that any fault could be found with the goalkeeper for Kilkenny, and that, of course, is David Herity. The goals that beat him three weeks ago were powerfully hit. JJ Delaney is again likely to be Joe Canning's marker. He's at number three alongside Paul Murphy and Jackie Turrell. Whether it's man-to-man -man or zonal defence, Brian Hogan will again hold the centre for Kilkenny with Tommy Welch and Kieran Joyce in close attendance. An improved performance will be sought in midfield where Richie Hogan is named as partner for Michael Fennelly. Killian Buckley is programmed to start at right half forward alongside Richie Power and the captain, of course, Owen Larkin. While the really big change sees Walter Welch given his debut at number 14 with TJ Reid and Henry Shefflin also listed in the inside line. Michael, your thoughts? Yeah, a huge call, I think, starting Walter Welch and Killian Buckley. It means their subs are very strong, but Brian Hogan is the man that to me the last day in the first half uncharacteristically Niall Burke gave him a thorough time caught a couple of high balls over his head and scored a goal and two points off him but in the last 25 minutes or in the second half he dominated the game he went back right into the centre in front of the full back line and single handedly I thought he was the most important player on the field along with Henry Shefflin and Paul Murphy but I really thought Hogan dragged him back into the game and I think a good start for him on Niall Burke if he can dominate you know that, I think that's a crucial battle today Thanks Michael second guessing where everyone is going to play and how the key matchups will work as part of the pre-match fascination of course we're about 17-18 uh, minutes away now from the start Michael we are, and we'll be back to Ger and Michael very shortly. But first, though, Liam Sheedy has been uh, looking at what he thinks will be some of the key areas and key battles in today's All Ireland final replay. Liam, looking at that sort of midfield area, I guess. Yeah, the midfield sector. You know, I think it's it's obviously uh, there's a lot of action happens around the middle of the field. And you know, Michael Finley would have come in obviously with Holder the year last year, but Earl Tanyan, you know, he had the most players of any player. Uh, the last day with 18 players and you know Andy Smith his partner I mean Galway had 8 minutes without a score and Andy Smith stepped up and struck a great point and you know right throughout they were well on top of this sector you know what I mean Michael Finley and Richie Hogan would be two very very good hurlers but again you see Henry Shefflin coming down and this is what Earl Tanya does really well you know he's getting back he's helping out he's like an extra man in that half back line works the pocket very well but I guess at the end of the day today it is about two men I think you know really I mean Joe Canning the last day it was definitely a game of two halves I think you know for every team you need leadership you know, and I thought Joe Canning, you know, Galway coming into their first final in a number of years, Joe Canning stepped up in that first half and said, mm. listen, lads, why don't you all relax? Mm. This is how you play in All-Ireland final day. And he had a huge impact, and he was the real reason why they went in five points up. But, like, in the second half, you know, we have to Henry, you know, Joe's 23, this guy's 33. And I thought, you know, single-handedly, he, he just dragged Kilkenny back into the game. You know, fairness, you know, he gave the ball. He done, Again, he was very unselfish, passed the ball out. Again, here he is, stepping up, catching the ball, you know. He finished with 12 points, Joe finished with 1-9, you know. Interestingly, Henry had three wides, Joe had five wides. So, like, the two of them are going to have a massive impact on this game today. They may not be the star player, yeah. but I think all of the team around them are always looking to know how's Henry going, how's Joe going, because I think Joe will determine what the Galway body language is like, and likewise with Henry. So, it'll be very, very interesting again today. Of course, guest of honour here at uh, Croke Park again today is the President of Ireland, Michael G. Higgins, with his wife Sabine, accompanied by the President of the GAA, uh, Liam O'Neill, and his wife Anya with him also. And the presidential salute is coming up.
Yes, President Michael D. Higgins once again about to meet today's finalists, accompanied by Uchtron, Common Luke Glasgow, Liam O'Neill. At first, it'll be the defending champions who now find themselves playing a, a sixth rather than a fourth match to retain the Liam McCarthy Cup. And uh, straight away, President Higgins goes to the team captain, Owen Larkin, set to do the introductions. It's his eighth championship season. And in this lineup are plenty of former All Ireland captains Jackie Tyrrell, 2006, Henry Shefflin the following year. Michael Fenley was the captain in uh, 19, 2009, even though he didn't start that final. TJ Reid was skipper in uh, 2010, and Tip won, of course. And Brian Hogan lifted the McCarthy Cup last year. And there's big Walter Welsh there, six foot four inches. Henry Shefflin hoping to win his ninth All Ireland medal this afternoon. The referee today, as we see the Liam McCarthy Cup on show here in the Hogan stand, referee James McGrath from the Turin Club in Westmead, the linesman are John Sexton from Cork and Barry Kelly who refereed the drawn match, and the sideline official is James Owens. The umpires are Tom McNicholas, David Hennessy, Johnny Fitzpatrick and David Clune. Big day for all of those, and we wish them the very, very best. On a beautifully sunny afternoon now, it's Galway's captain Fergal Moore, a 30-year-old physiotherapist, Introducing players who at least now have the experience of being here before and they've come from a 25-point league trouncing in April at the hands of Kilkenny to a stage where they've made the All-Ireland champions appear far from invincible. Now we're beating them in September, well that's the sport's biggest challenge. And there you see Niall Burke and uh, Cyril Donnellan, number 12, Damien Hayes, who's taken off in the draw match three weeks ago. There's Big Joe Canning, so much talked about him, and finally James Regan. And the president has met both teams. That's the initial formality completed. Will President Higgins be watching later as that, that McCarthy Cup is presented around about five o'clock by Liam O'Neill to another Galway man? Or will Kilkenny complete another two in a row as the presidential party make their way up into the Ord Corley section? It's an intriguing prospect and one we're greatly looking forward to. We are indeed, and President Higgins, of course, in his first year as President of Ireland, and he'll be attending four All-Ireland finals this September, two hurling, one football, and of course the Camogie final a little bit uh, earlier on as well. So then the uh, teams are getting into the parade behind the Artane band. Time for us to get the final views and thoughts from our panel here in the studio. Tomás Mulcahy, we found it hard to call in the drawn match. What are your thoughts this time? Michael, it's equally as hard to call, right? I mean, you would have said after the final whistle the last day, all momentum was with Galway, right? I mean, that they'll have the fresher legs, they'll have the hunger, they'll have the desire, they'll have the ability to actually win this one. Uh, I've looked at it again and I said, I've looked at the team selection and I said to myself, look, there is greater room for improvement in that Kilkenny <coughs> forward line. I would say that the hairdryer has been going for the last three weeks down at Kilkenny and for me it's going to be Kilkenny. Kenny for Tomás Mulcahy, Gerlach now. Well, I, I think there's no doubt over the two games, the two champions, Leinster final and, and, and the drawing match, the Galway were the better team, you know, and, and today they're going to be even better. They'll use the possession better. I think Joe's free-taking will be better, which wasn't great the last day. He'll be more in the game. So there are, there are advantages going to Galway as well. Now, on the other side, Kilkenny. I think the big crucial thing for the Kilkenny is a lot of the Kilkenny players felt the last day they let Henry down. You know, he was going yeah. through his ninth medal for a bit of history. Yeah. They're the ones who should have helped him. He was the one who dragged them. Now, at midfield especially, there'll be a big improvement today, but above all, I think the biggest improvement is Kilkenny will have fire in their bellies today. They didn't have that fire at all the last day. And I think that fire might just about drag them over the line, but it's going to be another fierce contest. I think it will. And by the way, as you can see, it's a lovely day here uh, in Dublin for this replay. Uh, showers earlier on the day, some of them very heavy, but it's cleared up very nicely this afternoon. Conditions are ideal. And that's our cue for Liam Sheedy to give us his view on this one. Yeah, you know, similar to the lads, I think we're in for another cracking game. Uh, Galway, you know, when they went seven points up the last day, definitely looked to have one hand on the trophy. They were hurling them, they were out hurling them all over the pitch. Kilkenny's second half performance was awesome, and I think they, they they sort of let us all know that they're not going away yet. So I think again, a lot of the Kilkenny lads wouldn't have slept great three weeks ago, uh, this night uh, three weeks ago, because of the performances they put in, and, and a man at 33 had to go and literally rescue them. And I think maybe they probably have the more room for improvement. But again, I think the key thing here is who's going to. I think if Galway could get those four or five points up, they will not uh, relinquish the lead this time. But the question is, if Kilkenny get the start and Galway were to go four or five down, what reaction will we get then? So it's finely poised, uh, but you know, on the, on the balance of what I've seen so far, I expect Kilkenny to win it just by a few points. All right, and there you have heard the views of our three panellists here in studio. But the ball is going to be thrown in shortly and we'll all be a lot wiser in about an hour and a half's uh, time. 
Uh, it's the All Ireland Hurling Final of 2012 Part 2. It's the rematch between Galway and Kilkenny. It is time for us to hand over to the commentary box to join Michael Dignan and first, Ger Canning. Thanks very much indeed, Michael. I think that's three votes for Kilkenny from our panel. Anyway, I'm sure the Galway fans who travel in huge numbers will have their own ideas about that, as Croke Park still looks at its most captivating, even after a month of finals, when over a quarter of a million people have seen camogie and football and now hurling part two. As always, it's an occasion that is inherently about what we are, truly Irish, an indigenous sport with a global appeal. And this Kilkenny team with magnificent appeal. I just wonder, Michael, just looking up at the panel to say and listening to their views there, whether there is a general kind of consensus that you get one chance to beat a team as good as Kilkenny and Galway had their one chance. Yeah, well, that's the consensus uh, by, from a lot of people. Uh, you know, there is certainly room for improvement in the Kilkenny performance, particularly up front. But I think there's a lot of room for improvement in the Galway performance, particularly in their forward line as well. You take David Burke, Cyril Donnell and Damien Hayes, Niall Burke to a lesser extent, even Joe Cannon in the second half to last, they didn't get on the ball. And I think if that Galway forward line taken, I expect them to do I think I would go against them. I think Galway could win this. I think the three-week break will energise them. They haven't done as much hurling as Kilkenny over the years. It must have been very difficult for Kilkenny. But look, at, we're only second-guessing. Uh, the fantastic atmosphere there. Packed again for some country for sport. 82,000 people again packed in here today. Uh, no tickets around this morning like there was maybe for the first day. And huge numbers, particularly from Galway travelling. And it's a brilliant atmosphere. The sun is out, and this is the only place to be. Not alone is the sun out, Michael, but the floodlights are on, and they have been on from about 12 o'clock today. When, as Michael Lester was saying earlier, it was quite dark at that stage, and there were ominous clouds overhead, and we had some rain as well. But Croke Park looks really, really special. It's a fantastic atmosphere and a sense of occasion about here. Galway finding themselves in a replay for the second time this year. Remember back in April they had to find a replay or play a replay with Dublin in a relegation league match and they won that replay in Port Leisha and duly retained their Division 1 league status. And uh, today's final is actually met in a replay at All-Ireland minor final back in 2004. Galway coming out on top on that occasion. And just before the action gets underway, there's going to be a, a moment's reflection now. Um, this is a moment's silence in honour of Paul O'Connor of Napierschig in Cork. Paul was a, a wonderful player, a wonderful coach as well, and he passed away very sadly in the last week or so. He coached Fitzgibbon with UCC during uh, five very successful campaigns, including this year indeed, they won the Fitzgibbon back in March against CIT. An awful lot of the Kilkenny and the Galway players, young students themselves, will have known Paul and be very sad at his passing. And let me also include here Mary Carmel O'Dwyer from Waterville, the power and the strength behind the great Mick O'Dwyer, her husband, Mary Carmel, very sadly, also died this week. And now it's time to face the tricolour before the action gets underway for the playing of Aron Nevian.